What's up everyone? Matt here, welcome back. Today I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into animation graphs by creating a rather simple strafing system as well as creating a um, aiming mechanic and this will introduce some pretty important features and elements and these are blend spaces, the ability to read uh, directly input coming from your keyboard or, or mouse as well as introducing the, the concept of layering. This video is probably going to be split into two episodes, I'm not sure yet because I'm recording this before everything else. If it is split, you will find the, the link to the second video pretty easily. Uh, that being said, let's get to work. Okay, so in this episode we'll be using some of the animations that are available for free in the animation starter pack uh, in the marketplace. Um, so, but the first thing we want to do is to create our project first and then from the marketplace it's really easy to just add all the content to an existing uh, project. Uh, the problem is that uh, to my knowledge you cannot add something as a new project so you will have to create your own first and then import everything. So what I will do is create a new project myself. Let's do that together now. Uh, we want to make a game. I will be choosing the traditional third person. Pick the, the folder you want, and then I'll name this one Strafing System. All right, let's create the project. Okay, and before everything else, what we'll do is just we will go back to the marketplace uh, and add the animation starter pack to this project, okay? So do this now, uh, go to the marketplace and you can search here, animation starter pack and there it is, so you just uh, click on it and click on add to project and you'll be choosing the one you want. Mine is strafing system add to project, this will uh, work in the background, and that's it. Then you can go back to your folder, and you will see under content that you will have a new folder called uh, Animation Starter Pack. And everything you need for this video is inside. So you can see that there's, let me just expand this a little bit more. Uh, you have a bunch of animations, a lot of them. Uh, you have a, a, a level that we'll be not using. There is an existing blueprint but we'll actually create our very own and then you have uh, some blend spaces here now the first thing we want to do this character here the mesh is actually using the one from the third person demo so the first step is just to assign the one that is coming from the anime starter pack folder in order for us to be able to use all the animations and assets so what we will actually do is we'll go to the U, uh, UE4 mannequin over here, go to mesh and we'll rename uh, the SK mannequin. Uh, be sure you're in the anime, anime starter pack over here and then just rename this as for example, anime starter character. But just because it has the same name as the one from the uh, TPP demo and since we'll be switching mesh, I want to make sure that you are choosing the, the proper one. So now select your character on the map and on the in the details pane over here, uh, you can over mesh on the mesh, sorry, you just click on SK Mannequin and pick the anime starter character. Okay, your character will go to T pose because uh, right now we don't have any uh, blueprint in use yet, but we'll uh, we'll keep, we'll leave it to none for now because we'll be creating our own. All right, so let's go back to our uh, anime starter pack root, and what we'll be doing is we'll be creating our own animation blueprint. All right, so right click anywhere in the um, in your folder and uh, right click on I'm sorry, select animation animation blueprint, uh, and then choose the one from animation starter pack. Click OK, and then uh, we'll be using, I don't know, let's call this one once again strafing system, why not? It's going to be a bit more than this, but 
at least it's it's pretty clear. Okay, let's open that. Okay, so you can see that we don't have anything and we'll be creating everything from scratch. Okay, so uh, the first thing we will be doing is not gonna be in the animation graph, but in the even graph. And we'll be creating two variables, speed, the speed of our character and the direction of our character. And these variables are gonna be necessary for us to create the, the blend space I was mentioning in the introduction. So switch to the even graph and you will see two nodes that are the only one we need now to get access to our character. So we will focus on the speed now. What you can do uh, from the uh, try get pawn owner, which is given access to the character, is drag a pin from the return value here, a release, it will show you that window. It's actually a shortcut for us uh, in order to, um, instead of right clicking and then plugging two nodes together, you can just drag out of a node and then if you if you create a node, then they will be connected automatically. It's just um, a, a fastest way to do, faster way to do things. And now the first function we will be uh, calling is get velocity, which uh, gives us a, a vector. And in order to for us to get the speed, we will need to get access to the length of that vector. So drag. Uh, a pin from return value and type vector length. Okay, and now the final thing we want to do is drag something out of return value here, click on promote to variable, and then you will see down here in variables that it created a new variable of a, of a float type, which is what we want, and you just need to give it a proper name, say speed, and see here it automatically set a new variable. Now, in order to have things uh, tidy and nice, uh, select those three nodes, press C, it will create a, a group, like a comment section. Uh, let's call this set, not get, set speed. And then the cool part as well is that if you move the, the comment block, you move everything that's inside, it's pretty cool. Now for the direction, we'll do the same uh, thing with different functions, of course. So drag a new pin here, and this time we'll need get actor rotation. Okay, and the second one we want is calculate direction. And then same thing here, from the original value, drag out a pin, promote to variable, and this one is gonna be called direction. Right. One thing we need to do though here is that the calculate direction function requires the velocity, uh, which is what we have here. So you just, uh, you need to connect the uh, return value from get velocity to the input of velocity over here. And then same thing, comment set direction. Okay. Now we still need to plug everything to uh, the uh, even blueprint update animation, which is the, the exec thread, so to speak. If you have all, uh, only this, it, it, it won't work because there's nothing for, for, for this to be, to be called. Okay, so you just need to drag something out here from the, um, uh, the output, plug in to set, and then this one here is not gonna be triggered unless you connect them too which means that on update animation, we'll be creating, we'll be setting the speed first and then the direction. Now, if you click compile, you will see that it's nicely showing that things are gonna be well executed in runtime. Okay, now it's time to switch to the animation graph to create our first hit machine and start to handle the actual motion because right now our character is still in typos, poor guy. Okay, so uh, obviously we want to create a new set machine that we will be calling, uh, I don't know, ground locomotion to be really original locomotion, all right? Connect that already to your output pose that is going inside. You can drag uh, the same thing as in the even graph, a pin from our entry here, at state, this one is gonna be called idle. 
Let's go inside and what we will be choosing is actually the idle rifle hip. Connect that, go back one level up and then from idle we'll be creating a second state which in turn will be called move. Okay, and then the return condition back from idle. Now let's create the condition to trigger idle to move. And this will be pretty simple. Um, we'll be looking at the speed variable, speed value. Okay, and if it's greater than something, say zero or one, then we can trigger that transition. All right, so we'll be using the speed variable. So uh, remember, if you control drag a variable, it's a get, okay? Now from the output here, you can drag a new, uh, a new pin and we will need this to compare the, the speed is gonna have to be greater than, okay? And uh, to ensure some, some buffer that usually, uh, I'm, I'm using a keyboard right now, but if you had a pad that was say like wrongly set and um, uh, without a dead zone, then the speed doesn't have necessarily to be exactly 0, 0 0.0. So in order to avoid something we don't want, I usually give you know a very small value that is still going to be greater than any margin of error you can have from a uh, an old pad. Okay, and then the uh, the back transition, so move from idle is going to be very similar. Control drag on the speed, and then. In turn, we want this to be less than one. Okay. Now, if you want to try and see that you did everything okay, what we can do really quickly is just, let's let's uh, search for a walk. Walk forward, rifle our inside, for example. Okay, I press play. Uh, yeah, okay, we uh, forgot to assign our character, assign the, the new BP blueprint we've been created to our character. So just click on it on the map, and then on anim, anim class here, you're gonna be able to select your strafing system. All right. Then if you click play and start moving around, okay, our character walks, and if release, he stops. All right. So let's pause the video for now. In the second one, we'll be creating our animation blend space using walk animations, and then we'll enhance it by adding jog animations.